All right. Well, welcome everybody. Shabbat Shalom. We're starting uh, a little bit later than I hope. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Do I have new faces back there? Hey guys, welcome. What's your names? Layton. 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 Okay. And what's your name? Tommy. Tammy. No. Oh, okay. I'm Gabe. So good to have you this morning. How'd you hear about the class? Tommy and Brian. Oh, nice. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for inviting me. Um, we, um, we're in Lesson 8 of Beginner's Hebrew, and um, we always like to go through the Hebrew alphabet first and foremost, but here's kind of our agenda for the day. To start with the alphabet, we're going to review that, say, about three times. Then we'll review the final form letters. There's five of those that change their appearance at the end of the word. And then we're going to go to an Aleph Bet quiz, but I'm actually not going to do the Aleph Bet quiz. Instead, I'm going to give you a vocabulary quiz. And I'm going to put the word up there, and you're going to write the meaning of the word. And uh, I didn't change. Oh, we're going to talk about ah class, ah class vowels today. And what's a mitzvah, and why do we keep them? That's going to be the other the question that we answer in the last portion of the class. All right? Y'all ready? Let's open in prayer, and then we'll jump into it. Avinu Machenu, Father, our King, we're so grateful for your Shabbat and a beautiful day that you've given us today. Thank you for the sun that's shining. We thank you for the rain that you provided on our land. And thank you for your spirit, your ruach, which hovers over us and, and dwells amongst us as we are the t living, t the temples of the living God, the one true God, the Mishkan, the dwelling place, Father. We just ask for a fresh outpouring of your teaching and your spirit this morning as we delight in your Shabbat. And it's in Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll jump into it. Let's go through the, the Aleph Beit. Um, we'll start with the Aleph up here, top right-hand corner, and then work our way across. Let's just say it together, just the names of the letters. Are you ready? Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He, Bab, Zion, Tet, Tet, Yud, Ha, Mon, Mem, Yud, Samen, Ayn, He, Sadi, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Ta. Your baby wasn't saying it. Can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it again. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Good job. All right. Let's do it a third time. Uh oh. <laughs> Are you ready? Aleph. Snake it around the room quickly here, and we'll start with Eli at the first letter. Yeah, we can go with that. So, Olive, Bait, Vait, Gim, Gim, Good. For you guys. <laughs> All right, so it goes Samic, I, and Pei, Eli. It's good. Ish. Sheen. Sheen. Ta. You got it. You want to start over and do it one more time? All right, Sophie. Good. Flashcard time. <laughs> Y'all ready? <laughs> now, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to use how many people? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'll be 21. So I need someone to have two letters. They need to be not, next to each other. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> not you? I'll have two letters. 
I need to find my sheet, sheet real fast. Everyone's going to get a letter, and I'm going to put it face down on the table. And let me just put this over here. Um, you know what? We need to pull final forms out of here real fast. So everybody, be reviewing your, be reviewing your uh, charts. I'm going to pull final forms out real quick. Be reviewing your charts because I'm going to give everybody a letter, and then I'm going to tell you all to get an order by your letter. You're going to move around the room. just tell you where to go. How about that? I'll give you a letter and tell you where to go because I need people to take letters. All right. I think I've got I think I've got all the duplicate letters and all the final forms pulled out, okay? So I'm going to put it face down. No, you got to do it. You got to do it. I'll tell you where to go. I'll tell you where to go. I'll tell you where to go. All right. Don't look at your letter until I tell you. Don't look at your letter until I tell you. You can't look at it. Ready? <laughs> All right. I need someone. Let me see. I'll be this one. Okay. Everybody, look at your cards. Raise your hand if you have the mim. Okay. No. No. Raise your hand if you have a mim. Okay. Nope. All right. Hey, look. You're up for this. All right, are you ready? I'm going to give you all, let's do five minutes to see if you can go around the room and get yourselves in order. Olive is going to be right here. Olive is right here, and then we'll go that way and hang that way. You ready? Set, go. Five minutes. Oh, I think you got this in five minutes. Easy. Green Daddy's Olive. I know you're not Olive. No, I got it. I'm at near the end. I'm um, a I love bacon without hay. Okay. Hey, Vav, you're right here. You're right here next to me. Uh, dollar. We need our dollar. Where's the dollar? Your cough. So you're gonna be that way more. We need dollar. Where's dollar? Oh, there you are. Olive bait. Gimel. Dollar. Hey. Vav. Who's Zion? Where's Zion? There's Zion over here. Come, you're gonna be right here. Okay. Look for your look for your place. You gotta say the alphabet. Look for your place. Eli, you're gonna be towards the end. Pay. Lamed, uh, noon. Summit, Lamed, Mim, Noon, Samik, Ayan. Uh, we got it? We're getting there? I think we're at, we're pushing three minutes. We're pushing three minutes. Sadi Kuf. So you're going to be to Caleb, or to uh, Patrick's right there. All right, I think we were at three and a half minutes. I was watching the clock, three and a half minutes. Good job. Was that fun? Got you all, got your, your blood pumping a little bit. Let's see, we got Olive, Bait, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Vav, Zion, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf. Uh oh, no, we got one out of order. Kaf. Kaf needs a go. Kaf. Lamed, Mim. So, Caleb, you're going to be over there next to Kaf, right there by Destiny. Kaf, Lamed, Mim, Noon. Samith, yeah, there we go, there we go. Now, Samith, Ayin, Pei, now it's in order. Sadi, Kuf, Reish, Sheen, Tav. Good job, all right. You guys wanna hand me your cards? You wanna pass all your cards down this way? You guys are good. Muy bien, I mean, Tov may ode. Mazel Tov. Yeah, Mazel Tov. Good job. All right, you guys can grab your seats. You can grab your seats. Grab your seats. Gabe's been up since uh, four thirty. Drinking coffee this morning. Okay. Okay. Uh, check your camera. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna get knocked around. Yeah. Okay, I think we're still good. All right. Good deal, guys. Let's go through. I'm gonna say the letter of the alphabet now. I'm going to say the letter of the alphabet, and I want you guys to tell me the sound that that letter is going to make, okay? Everybody ready? Aleph. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. 
always wanted to punch that. You ready? Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zion, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Same, Ay, Pe, Sadi, Kuf, Rish, Sheen, Tav. Alright, let's do it again. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, Pe, Vav, Zayim, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Same, Ayn, Pe, Sadi, Kuf, Resh, Shim, Tav. Good job. Alright, we'll go on to our next exercise. We already did flashcards. <laughs> All right, I forgot to pass out my handouts here, but let me give you guys a few minutes to work on the handouts. Can I get a pass around one more? Okay, Destiny and Ryan, thank you. You guys want to split one? Yeah, you want to go over last week's? I forgot to do that last week, didn't I? Just hit, if you have last week's, let's take a minute and go over last week's handout real fast before we jump into this week's. I'm sorry, I ran out of time last week. We didn't do it. You have last week's? I don't have a copy of it. Okay. I see how you did. All right, last week's, as my pass routers are passing out, last week's, so I'm going to start and go down this. Um, if you don't have last week's, don't worry, it's a five-point deduction, final grade. <laughs> All right, last week's is Sade, is a field. Sade is field. Um, this is where we get the word Shaddai from, El Shaddai. It comes from the root Sade. All right, and then uh, Ish, Ish is a fire. Um, ish is man. Then we have re'e is uh, to, um, well, this is, it could be translated a couple different ways, actually. Uh, you have a ro'e is a shepherd, re'e is to see, and ra'e is your neighbor, because your neighbor's kind of like watching, <laughs> you know, some of you have nosy neighbors. Um, <laughs> and then the next word, the h, or the h, the he is ha, it's the prefix the, lamed is the prefix to, Bait or b is the prefix in, and im is the plural masculine <coughs> suffix that you would see at the end of a word, like Elohim. Okay, that yud final mim. All right, good job, you got 100. All right, let's go, let's give everybody a few minutes to do your handout for this week. And um, at about 9.30, we'll switch gears. Okay, so a few minutes to do this. Maybe a little bit before 9.30. Okay. I'm sure Nicole or Nicole. Yep, so you're going to go um, use these word banks here. So um, this will be like te, ru, and then you find, you find the one that matches you right there, and then there's a column for the translation. Yeah. So, so just let me explain, guys, because I didn't, I didn't do a good job explaining. Hey, everybody, look at me real fast. This is, this is your word bank for the, what's called the transliteration. This is your word bank for the translation, okay? So we got transliteration, you write it in this column, what you think it sounds like, then what you think it means is in this column, and this is your word bank up top for that, okay? Everybody good? She's in the other classroom. Watch. Do you need her? You need mom? She's in the other room. She's in the kids' room.
If you didn't get last week's handout, I have extras here for those who need one. You want to okay, you want to do that home? Great. Okay, take about two more minutes, guys. I'm not giving you a whole lot of time for this, but I'm going to go over them here shortly. Take about two more minutes. Good. Yeah, I don't know what they put in me, but I think. Yeah. Yeah, well, Sarah and I have been studying this one. Oh, good, okay. Yeah, you know, Good. One more minute. One more minute, and then I'm going to go over your uh, the meanings of them. Okay. Huh? We're going to go over the whole sheet. So if I stop where you're at for a second, and uh, let's look at the very first word. The I'm going to go through the transliteration, and then I'll say the translation of it, okay? The first one is teruma, teruma, and it comes from the root room, which means to lift up or to elevate. It um, is most often translated as a gift, a gift, um, how does it have, yeah, gift or an offering. It's a room. It's something you elevate and give up, okay? Uh, and this is what uh, Moses is told by God on Mount Sinai. Ask the people of Israel for a terumah, and a contribution, an elevation, an offering. The next word is lev. Lev. Lev means your heart. Heart. And like the, we have Kalev back there, Caleb. His name means all heart. All heart. Um, any dog lovers in the room? Yeah, okay. So the word for dog in Hebrew is similar. It shares that same root, lev, but it's kolev, which means um, uh, all, kind of like all heart as well. I mean, you know, like dogs are very, like, uh, you know, affectionate. They love humans. Like, they're very loving, you know. So <laughs> when you're mad at him, you can call him kolev. Come here, kolev. All right, next one is zahav, zahav. 
Zahav means gold. 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 This is one of the contributions the people of Israel had to bring, is gold. And then uh, Kesef. Kesef. Kesef is silver, but could also be translated as money. Kesef is money or silver. Same thing in biblical culture. Next word is tolaat. Tolaat. Tolaat is uh, it's a color and it's an animal, an insect. It's um, it's a worm or crimson. Why does crimson and worm the same word? Do you think tolaat? Why are they the same word? You smush the worm to get the color. Yeah, it's a very special, and it's not really like a worm. It kind of looks like a worm, but it's more like an insect that fuses its body to a tree, and you have to it fuses its body to a tree, and you have to pluck it off of that tree, and it kills the it kills the insect. The insect gives its life to provide that stain, that crimson stain, and that's why in Psalm 22, yeah, Psalm 22, Yeshua is on the cross, and he says. Uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If you keep reading Psalm 22, he says, I am but a worm. He uses that word tolaat. I am but like an animal that fuses its body to a tree to provide a crimson stain, and I give my life on that tree. So it's a fascinating study. Look up tolaat. It's actually more specifically tolaat sheni. Um, the Temple Institute just recently, in the past couple of years, for the first time in 2,000 years, began to harvest the tolaat sheni off of trees in Israel for the first time in 2,000 years, to provide that crimson stain. You, you take them and you pluck them off of the bark of a tree, you put them in a dish of water, and you stir them up, and it, and it turns the water like this deep red, like blood red color, and then you use that to dye fabrics. It's really fascinating. But look up Tola Atsheni. Um, mikdash is the other word. Mikdash. Mikdash. What is a mikdash? Sanctuary. Sanctuary, yeah. It comes from... An, more literally, you see the word kado, kadash there, or kadosh. It's the place of the kadosh. Mi, mi kadosh, mikdosh. Um, that means the place of like the holiness, the set apart place, the unique place, right? And that would be the sanctuary or the tabernacle. Next word is lo, lo. Lo means no. Lo means no. Next word, aron, aron. It means a box, a box. Or in our context, it's the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, the box of the covenant. Then we have Edet, or it could be pronounced, um, uh, yeah, Edet, 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 which means uh, testimony or witness. Ad means time. Time is always a witness for or against us. And Adet is the witness or the testimony. That's So we have Aron. Ha a date is the ark of the testimony, the ark of the testimony, the box of the testimony. All right, you guys can hang on to those and um, go ahead and get out a clean piece of paper, a clean piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is kind of give you a vocab quiz, and we're going to talk through these words that we've been learning throughout our fundamentals class. So that's a clean piece of paper. As I put the slide up, you guys will write the word. As I put up the slide, you will write the word. I don't really count off for spelling or anything like that because it's a Hebrew word and it's just, you know, don't worry about the spelling of it in our English language because it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Are you ready? So here's your first word. Take, don't say it out loud. I know you're used to saying it out loud, but don't say it out loud today. Just write what you think it is, the transliteration of it. And then write the meaning of that word. So write how you think it sounds and then write the meaning of it next to it. This is the very first topic that we covered, the very first week we met together. All right, let's go to the next one. If you don't know, don't, don't stress out. All right, let's go to the next one. This is the second week we talked about this thing. We would say this to the king, the messenger would bring this to this king. The army is victorious in battle. The king sits on his throne a little bit longer. Next word, here we go. No, who says no? All right, five seconds. Ready? This word, this is the third one we covered. All right, so 
So write, <coughs> write the sound that it makes and then write what you think it means. Next one. Write the sound it makes and what you think it means. Yeah, just take a shot. All right. Moving kind of quick, but we'll do this again next week. Don't worry. Next one. I put a A in front of it now. What does this change it to? Next one. This is the watchman. This is the shoot. Uncut vine. This is the Christian. This is plural of that word we just looked at. This is the watchmen, the uncut shoots, the untended vines, the Christians, the Nazarenes. I'm getting closer and closer. Next one. This is that same word, just with a prefix in front of it. these slides, I'd be happy to email them to you. Just let me know if you want to study them throughout the week. Um, and in fact, oh, I, one thing I started doing when I upload these videos to YouTube, I put a link to all these slides in the description below it. So you just go to that video, and I post it in our Hebrew study group on Facebook. Um, just, it, just go in there and click on description or whatever, and you'll see it. But if you just want me to email it to you or text it to you, I can text you this link as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the best thing to do is write it down on a piece of paper and give it to me. All right, top word. Top word, what is that? And then bottom word, what is that? Remember we said beard? Beard, and then a servant. Beard and a servant. <laughs> Giving you hints. Beard and a servant. time here at one of, one of our services came in and at the end of the service she was asking me questions she said what's with all the beards <laughs> <laughs> and I was like honestly I I think it's just a coincidence thing <laughs> okay so we got beard servant so talk of, like these are the classes we've been going through tell me what they what you think they mean next one. Oh no this one we already did all right let's let's check your work now okay you got nothing? Okay, here, fill it in then. You ready? First one. What is this? Someone tell me. Tell me. What is a tell me? A disciple or student. Yeah. What's this one? Besora. What is Besora? Good news, glad tidings. Yeah. King likes to hear. Okay, what is this one? Shema. Shema. Hear and do. Hear and obey. Shema. What is this one? Derek. Derek. The way, right? Or way. Here is Ha Derek. The way. And this is one of the earliest uh, five times we are called this in the book of Acts, right? What is this? Notes read. Notes read. And we're called this two times in the book of Acts, if I'm not mistaken. The Nazarene, or Nazarene. Here are Nazarenes. Notes read. Notes read plural. Here are the Ha Notes read. The Nazarenes. And we're called this a couple times in the book of Acts as well. The names of our movement. What is this one? Zikin. What is a zikin? Beard or elder. It's implied it's an elder, right? And we talked about the hierarchy of the local assembly, and it's led by spiritual aspect of the local assembly. It's led by the zikinim, the elders. What's this one? Shamash. Shamash is a servant or a deacon, and the deacon provides the physical aspects of the community. What is, oh, we didn't do this one in the quiz, but what is it? 
Say it. You're close. So we got ma Mashiach. Mashiach. What is a Mashiach? Messiah. The one who has had oil poured over their heads. Anointed. Okay, what was this one? This was last week's. This is our baby mouse, so it's going to go E. Mik. Va. Mikva. What is a mikva? A ritual immersion in water, right? A ritual immersion in water. Okay, this is our new word for this week. And then we're going to go back and review all these words, okay? Question that we're going to answer today, our essential question in the fundamentals portion of this class, is what is a mitzvah, mitzvah, and why do we do them? Why do we observe them? Okay? Matthew 28, I want to read this. Therefore, go and make disciples, Talmudim, of all nations, baptizing them. Remember we talked about doing it a mikvah with them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I've commanded them. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So he's, he's laying out a template of our redemption and sanctification and disciple-making process. Number one, we find someone who's not a disciple and we make them a disciple. Here, be a disciple, be a student, be an imitator of my teacher. Then we have to immerse them in water. And, and we have to immerse them in the authority and in the name of these three things right here. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then, we're not done yet. We can't just leave them alone because that'll be like a newborn baby, right? And they'll starve to death if we just leave them alone. That's child neglect. What we got to do now is we got to start teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded us. Okay, that's just, so that's just the gateway right here, this first part. Then we got to command. We got to teach them everything he commanded us. So our faith then begins to be propelled by obedience, Okay, I'm going to teach you everything with the intent that you will then obey everything that I'm teaching you, right? And that's what a disciple ends up looking like, is someone who's obeying their teacher's teachings, okay? So, the word mitzvah comes from the root sabah, sabah. Now, you know this word because we say Adonai sevaot, seva, sevaot, or armies. So, this root here can be an army, but what do you give, in, what do you give a bunch of troops? What do you tell them to do? You command them. You give them orders, right? And so that's where this root is. It's a group of people who are ordered. They're commanded. I want you to go fight, right? Huh? Oh, over there. Do you need help? Are you good? Um, the first time we see this, Sava, Sava is in um, Genesis 2.16. What's going on there, Sava? The very first time we see this root. Uh, Genesis 2.16, what's going on there? What's going on in Genesis 2.16? Somebody's looking it up. <laughs> Here's the answer. Oh, are you going to read it, Hannah? Go ahead. Sure. Adonai God gave the person this order. You may freely eat from every tree in the garden. That word order is a command. Sabah. He gave them this sabah. Okay? What's going on in Genesis 3.11, however? Go ahead and read it, Patrick. Yeah. Now you are cursed from the ground which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood at your hands. Hmm. That doesn't sound right. Genesis 3.11? Oh, that's a cool one. Oh, okay. I think it did sound right. Oh, here we go. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I ordered you not to eat? Yeah, that word order is savah. Savah, okay? So right away, out the chute, God creates us, and then he gives us a seva, an, an order, a commandment. Don't eat this. And notice it's a dietary law. It's interesting. Don't eat this. So the very first thing that allowed in, sin and death to enter this world is our infraction of a dietary law. Isn't that interesting? Do we have a problem with our, with our taste buds or what? Deuteronomy 11.26. So we continue to flesh this concept of a mitzvah out a little bit. Deuteronomy 26 says this, see, I am setting before you a blessing or a curse. A blessing if you obey my mitzvot. Now it's plural. My commandments. Hey, welcome. And a, uh, I lost my place, of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today. But a curse if you disobey the mitzvot. Okay? So, obedience equals what? Blessing. blessing. 
disobedience equals curse. So now we just got to figure out what are these mitzvot, right? Um, you guys, uh, the past people are I command you today to follow the other gods which you have not known. Here's another thing, Deuteronomy 30. I call heaven and earth as a witness against you today that I have set, you, set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. So choose life. Or remember we said obedience equals life, obedience equals blessing. Choose that stuff so that you and your descendants may live and that you may love the Lord your God and obey him and hold fast to him. So what is God's, remember the five love languages I was big back like 10, 15 years ago? What is God's love language? Obedience. Obedience is God's love language. I just want you to obey me. And for any fathers in the room, that's your love language too, isn't it? There's different types of obedience we'll talk about here in a second. Proverbs 6.23. So I'm kind of going in chronological order and fleshing out this concept of a mitzvah. Here it says, Ki ner mitzvah ve Torah or ve derek chayim. Let's translate that. Ki, uh, your, your, it, your mitzvah is like a ner, a lamp. Your mitzvah, your commandment is like a lamp. And your Torah is light. And it's the way, the derek, see that word derek right there? It's the way of Chaim, life. So again, the, the writer of Proverbs is fleshing this out and, and re-emphasizing what God said in Deuteronomy, that the Torah, the mitzvot, life, and a lamp to our feet. Your word is a... Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Okay. Yeah, a lamp to my Derek. Yeah, so... <laughs> You see, he's fleshing that out. He's saying the commandments, God's word, is a light. It gives us clarity. It gives us direction. And it keeps us from dying. It keeps us from the curse, right? Pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. My son, keep my words and treasure my mitzvot within you. Keep my mitzvot and live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Cool. It's interesting. Matthew 5. <coughs> Yeshua now is going to address this topic. He says the following, do not think. So maybe, maybe he's thinking that someone down the road will think. <laughs> I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And the Greek word there is play root. It means to fill up with understanding and meaning. So let me ask you, can, can fulfill be a synonym of abolish? In that context? Yeah. It cannot. So if we translate it as a synonym, we're translating it incorrectly. We cannot translate it as synonyms. So fulfill must mean something other than abolish. Fulfill means to fill up with understanding, to, to fill with meaning. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth... Oh, wait a second. Where do we see heaven and earth last? Right there. Remember, there are the two witnesses, either for or against us. When we're disobedient, even the heavens and the earth cry out and testify against us. Paul talks about that. The earth is groaning for new creation because we're disobedient. The earth is revolting against us. They're the witnesses. So the witnesses stand in the courtroom, the heavenly courtroom. And here Yeshua is invoking those. Until heaven and earth disappear, remember because they're the two witnesses, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means pass from the Torah until everything is accomplished. Therefore, whoever sets aside one of the least of these commandments, these meets votes, and teaches others to do the same, will be least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. I like to go out, I've taught this uh, in Uganda, I go out and I get a scoop of dirt and I hold it. And I'm like, what is this? Earth. <laughs> what is out there? Heaven. Have they gone? If they were walking on the same earth that our Messiah walked on, have they disappeared? Have they vanished since he walked on it? No. So is everything accomplished? No. So therefore, we can deduce that even the least of the commandments is still applicable. It's still relevant. Now, we have to ask ourselves a question, though. There's 613 of these commandments, of these mitzvot. Which ones apply to us now? Which ones apply to us? Gabe Rutledge male, school teacher, living in Dothan, Alabama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we have the, the tedious task of going through these 613 commandments and figure out which one of these affect my life. Because I want to be obedient. I want to be a source of life, a blessing. I want to be great in the kingdom of heaven. 
1980, the General Accounting Office was tasked by Congress to determine how many federal laws exist. Because we think 613, that's a lot of laws. By 1984, they hadn't yet received a response. When asked why this was the case, the GAO stated that they were still counting. At that point, they were up to at least 3,000 and only just touched the tip of the iceberg, as they say. It was estimated at that time that at that rate, which Congress was passing laws, that by the year 2000, there would be an excess of 20,000 laws on the book. We live in this nation. And we govern our lives by those laws. So when we see the number 613, we're like, legalism, you know? That's a lot of laws. That is so restrictive. And only, I would guess, about 30% of those 613 actually apply to us here in Dothan, Alabama. Not kings, not Levites. You know, we're, we're really about 30% of those 613. But we live in a land, we live in a country that has 20,000 plus federal laws on the books. Probably double that now, because that was back in 2000. <laughs> so who's being legalist here, right? Um, 1 John 2, 3. Now John is going to talk about this. By this, we can be sure that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. So if we don't keep his commandments, I don't know. Are we, do we really know him? So there's evidence that us knowing him. By this, we know that we love the children of God, but that we, we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments, his mitzvot, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Remember, God's love language is obedience, right? And all his commandments, and his commandments, his mitzvot, are not burdensome. If anyone tries to make them burdensome, they're doing it wrong. Don't let them make, them, make it burdensome. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be delightful. Um, a mitzvot, and I like to tell people this, a mitzvot, how many of you have done uh, Boy Scouts in here? I know you have, right? Boy Scouts, what do you try to get when you're a Boy Scout? What's, you try to get badges. Merit badges? Is that what you call them in Boy Scouts? Merit badges. Okay. And that's kind of your goal. As uh, in, If you're in karate, it's a different color belt, right? You're trying to level up. Well, a mitzvot is kind of like a merit badge. That you can, you can complete it and you can say, you know what? I, I, was, I was able to obey God in this area. And, I, and through that, and this is the Jewish understanding of a mitzvah, is that you do a mitzvah to better understand your creator. Think about that. You do a mitzvah so that you can better understand the nature of your creator. So not committing adultery, I'm not going to do that. And therefore, I can better understand my creator because he wants me to be faithful. He's faithful to me. Not murdering. My God is loving. He's compassionate. He's merciful. He loves, he loves the sanctity of life. So I can better understand him by not murdering, right? So we do these mitzvot not to, not to gain anything, not to earn anything, but to better understand the nature and the character of our creator. Does that make sense? And that's his love language. 1 John 3, 4, or 3, 3 through 4. And everyone who has this hope in him continues purifying himself. How do we purify ourselves? Since God is pure. Everyone who keeps on sinning is violating the law or uh, exercising lawlessness there. Indeed, sin is violation of the law. Look this up in, your, in 1 John 3, 4. Guys, this is the only place, and I, I stand to be corrected on this too, this is the only place in the New Testament where I can find and I've ever found a definition of what sin is from the Bible. It's the only place that I've ever found. But correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I, I've been looking and I haven't found it. This is the only place I can find in the New Testament where there's a definition of sin. And what is sin? Sin is violation of the law. So what would righteousness be then? If sin is, is violation of the law, what is righteousness? Keeping his law and figuring out which parts of it you need to keep and apply to your life, right? So, disobedience, let's review. Disobedience to the mitzvot brings death. Obedience brings life. It's just as simple as that. Just as simple as that. But, there's a formula we have to follow, and it's really important we follow this formula. Ephesians 2, 1 through 9. Who's got like a thing they can turn to real fast? And I'm going to ask the question, are we redeemed from sin and death by keeping the mitzvot? Because this is something um, a lot of people will misunderstand about the messianic realm, the messianic faith, and what we do here is they will think, oh, they're trying to earn their salvation. And it's really important. Who's got it? Who's got Ephesians 2? Anybody? You got it? Yeah, would you read it nice and loud? 1 through 9? Yes. You used to be dead because of your sins and acts of disobedience. You walked in the ways of the Olam Hazah 
and yeah, obey. which is the the age of this present age. And obey the ruler of the powers of the air, who is still at work among the disobedient. Indeed, we all once lived this way. We followed the passions of our old nature and obeyed the wishes of our old nature and our own thoughts. In our natural condition, we were headed for God's wrath, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy and loves us with such intense love that even when we were dead because of our acts of okay. disobedience. Pause. Even when we were dead in our acts of what? Disobedience. Disobedience. Keep going. He brought us to life along with the Messiah. It is by grace that you have been delivered. That is, God raised us up with the Messiah Yeshua and seated us with him in heaven in order to exhibit in the ages to come how infinitely rich is his grace, how great is his kindness toward us who are united with the Messiah Yeshua. For you have been delivered by grace through trusting, and even this is not your accomplishment, but God's gift. You are not delivered by your own actions, therefore no one should boast. Amen. So, can we earn that? It is a gift. A gift is completely free. Here you go, guys. Here's salvation. Here's salvation even when you're dead in your sin and you don't deserve it. Here's a gift for you. That's how loving he is. Right? So there's this, this formula that we have to go through. Number one, we have to be redeemed. Take the people of Israel in Egypt. Did they get the Torah and then come out of Egypt? Or did they come out of Egypt and then get the Torah? They came out of Egypt. They applied the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. They trusted, right? Just like Paul said, they trusted that that would save them. And it did. Then they, 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 the angel of death passed over them. They were saved through that act of trust. And then they left. They mikvah. So we get redeemed. We go into a mikvah. We get immersed in water. We come up as a new creation, just like the people of Israel went through the Red Sea. They were a mikvah all as once, like a group mikvah. And then they went to Mount Sinai. And they received his word. And it's there that we see as believers in Acts chapter 2, the Sinai part, part 2, if you want to call it that, we have that spirit dwelling in us, which Jeremiah 31, 33 says is the Torah, the mitzvot, written on our hearts. Isn't that interesting? So we're, we're following that same template of salvation. We get redeemed, free gift. We get immersed in water, something we, we should do not necessary for our, our, our place in, in the kingdom of heaven, but it's something if we have the uh, uh, availability to be able to do it, we should do it. Step three, we receive the word of God, the Torah, the revelation of his, of his word. Why? So that we can be sanctified and purified and get ready for the wedding that is to come. And we do that through his word. We are sanctified, we're purified through his word. Is that an overnight thing? No, it wasn't for the people of Israel. It took them 40 long years to get Egypt out of them, to get their stubbornness out of them. And even then, a whole generation had to pass before they could come into the promised land. <coughs> so don't fret if you have to spend your whole entire life figuring out those 613 commandments, which ones apply to you and which ones don't. That's okay. As long as you're thinking about it, you're meditating on it, and you're praying about how to walk out God's commandments and obedience. Okay? Does that make sense? It could take a whole lifetime. I know it will for me. Then... Lo and behold, we enter the kingdom as his bride. And read the whole book of Revelation. It's just all talking about being purified, being refined, being crushed, being tribulated, and getting ready for that experience right there. So we can present ourselves as a pure bride in robes of white. All right? Two forms of obedience. When I tell Eli to take the trash out, right now Eli is in a place of fearing me and the repercussions that come along with him not taking the trash out. Like, okay, Eli, you lost Legos for a week, or something like that, or Eli, go to your room for the rest of the day. It's a fear thing for him, and that's why he obeys me. But is that my desire? No. Why? What is my desire for Eli's obedience? That he do it out of love. Now, I wasn't in, until, I, I was in my 20s, my, my, I'm ashamed to say my early to mid-20s before I started really obeying my dad and honoring my dad because I loved him. Isn't that sad? All, all the time prior to that, I feared my dad. Even when I was 16 years old, I feared my dad. I feared he would take my car keys from me or something like that. Or ground me, right? 
I never really obeyed him out of love. Now, God will accept your obedience out of fear. Your obedience out of fear is better than your disobedience. Does that make sense? Your obedience out of fear of God, he'll take, he'll accept it. It's better than your disobedience. But really, he wants to get you to a point, and he wants to get me to a point, where we will obey him out of the second one, love. It's the greater form of obedience. Does that make sense? So fathers and mothers in the room, think about that. Your number one job, really, is to get your kids to fear you. And then later, love you. I mean, think about it. We, that's very politically incorrect to say right now. But if they don't fear you, then they won't love you. Now, with Eli, he will realize one day, I provide his every single need. The clothes on his back, the food in his stomach, the bed he sleeps in, the roof over his head. And he will realize that and be like, I love my dad. He's a good dad. I will obey him. But until he gets to that point, guess what? He's going to fear me. And that's okay. That's better than disobedience. And that obedience will save him from a mess of trouble. Right? Revelation 12, 17 will end on this slide today. Then the dragon was enraged with, at the woman. The woman is the body of Messiah, by the way. At the woman uh, and, uh, went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those, here's your offspring, those who keep the God's commandments and hold fast to the testimony of Yeshua, of Jesus. So the woman doesn't go to wage war with those who keep the commandments. The woman doesn't go to wage war with those who keep the testimony of Yeshua. The woman goes, or I'm sorry, the dragon goes to make war with those who do both. Now, as hard as it is to say this, I want to be in that category. Because that means I'm going to be found a good and faithful servant. Okay? Any questions, guys? This is the closest to on time that I've ever finished. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're not going to go over the vow that we're going to learn. Uh, we're, we'll learn that next week. There's no rush, okay? So we'll learn that next week. Thank you guys for your attention. Let's close in prayer, and then we'll, we'll wrap up for the day. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for your Shabbat. We ask that you would move in a new and a mighty way this morning amongst us as we gather to sanctify and worship your holy name. Help us to make that the number one priority this morning, just lifting praises up to you. And I thank you for everyone in this room, and you kept them safe, and they traveled here out of obedience to fellowship together, and to join together in honor and set your Shabbat apart. Bless them and bless their households. In Yeshua's name, amen. amen. Yo, how y'all doing? Good stuff, guys.